I want to show you how you can use the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus financial calculator to calculate the present value and the future value of an annuity. Now, an annuity is a finite stream of equal payments made at equal intervals. And this is a really useful concept because there are a lot of examples of annuities, such as a mortgage, a car payment, a pension, or if someone chooses to take their lottery winnings over time. So finding the present and the future value of an annuity allows us to answer a number of interesting questions like, how much do I need to save each year so that I'll have $100,000 saved for when my child enters college in 18 years? How much can I withdraw each year from my 401k account in equal amounts if I have $2 million in my account when I retire? How much will I need in my 401k account if I want to withdraw $250,000 per year for the 30 years I'm retired? So these are the kinds of questions that, that people will want to answer, even those who are not in the field of finance. So the present value of an annuity, we're just going to find the present value of each of the individual cash flows and then add them up. So there's a definite, couple of definitions here. If the first cash flows received one period from today, we refer to this as an ordinary annuity. If the first cash flows received today, we refer to this as an annuity due. So sometimes with an ordinary annuity, we say the f cash flows are at the end of the period. And sometimes for an annuity due, we say the cash flows are at the beginning of the period. So if you're looking at what it looks like for an ordinary annuity, you're just taking the present value of this A dollar amount for T periods, and you start with year one. So you have to discount the first cash flow. If it's an annuity due, so the first cash flow begins today or at the beginning of the period, then this first cash flow doesn't have to be discounted because it's already in present value terms. And we discount the other cash flows um, and there will be T minus one of them. Remember, we have one here and we have you know T minus one here. So the total is T cash flows. So there are a couple of formulas here there's a present value of the ordinary annuity, and there's a present value of the annuity due. And basically they're the same, except all you have to do is find the future value of the ordinary annuity to get the annuity due. Now, you don't need to know these formulas because they have financial calculators now. Before the days of financial calculators, students had to use these formulas to do the calculations. You don't need to do that now and that's the nice thing about having, for example, the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator. So if you want to look at how this looks graphically, um, the annuity is here. This is the ordinary annuity. It begins in year one for five periods. For the annuity due, it begins in time period zero and ends in time period four, but it still has five cash flows. So. Suppose you win the lottery and you're going to receive 50000 per year for 20 years. You'd like to receive a lump sum of money today rather than take the $50,000 per year. If the interest rate is 6%, how much should you receive? Well, if it's an ordinary annuity, we can apply that formula and we get the answer. If it's an annuity due, we take the ordinary annuity and just find the future value of it, multiply it by 1.06. But it's so much easier in the financial calculator. So here we have these time value of money functions here. N is the number of periods. I slash Y is the interest rate per year. PV is present value. PMT is our annuity. That's the stream of equal payments. And FV is future value. So if we wanted to find this here, we could put these values into the calculator. Now to clear the calculator, you should at second clear TVM. And then let's type in the values. 20 is N. The interest rate is 6%. And you put it in as a whole number. 
and the PMT or the annuity is 50,000. And we're going to compute the present value and that's the same number we had on the previous slide, 573,496 and a little bit of change. Now we could just multiply this by 1.06 or we can reset our calculator to do the calculation for us. You'll notice there's nothing up here in the upper right hand corner. That means that it is using end of period cash flows or calculating an ordinary annuity. Usually we do ordinary annuities. But it also has the, the capability of just being adjusted. So you would hit second and above the PMT key it says BGN. So here you see end you don't change it by hitting the arrow keys, it tells you to change it by hitting set. And set is second, and then above the enter key it says set. So now it says BGN. And you'll notice that up above the zero here in the upper right hand corner it says BGN. So now you know it's set for beginning of period cash flows. We already have the numbers in here, let's just recompute the present value, and here's the value we had before. So you can do it that way easy to do. I recommend though, before I leave here, that you set this back to the end of period cash flows. Most calculations you'll do will be end of period calculations. So you want to set that back and if you need to you can change it later. So for the future value of an annuity we're going to find the future value of each cash flow and then add them up. Again, if the first cash flow is received one period from today or at the end of the period, we refer to this as an ordinary annuity. If the first cash flow is received today, we refer to this as an annuity due. And here's how we do the calculations. So we're going out to time period T. So here it's in year one it's going from year one to year t, so you're raising it to the one plus r to the t minus one power. In year two, you're going from year two to year t, so that's t minus two powers, etc. When you get to the final period, it's going to be t minus t, or to the zero power, and anything raised to the zero power is one. So you don't actually have to find the future value of this. If you want the value of the annuity due, the first cash flow is going to go for T periods, the second per cash flow is going to go for T minus one periods, etc. And then you're going to have that last cash flow will go for one period. So it looks like this. So if you want to define the future value in time period T, you'd bring this out four periods. You'd bring this out one, two, three periods. This went out two periods, and this went out one period, and the year five cash flow is already where it needs to be. If you want to find the annuity due, the future value of the annuity, annuity due, we still want to know what it's worth in year five, but the first cash flow begins in year zero, so this is going to go out one, two, three, four, five periods. This is going to go four periods, three periods, two periods, and this year four cash flow will go out for one period. And again, we'll add them up. So here's the formula. Okay, Looks a little bit similar to the present value of the annuity formula. But again, you don't really need to know this because the calculator does this. Again, and you should take advantage of that. Okay, Again, if you go back in time and before they had financial calculators, students had to use these formulas to do the calculation. And again, the difference between an ordinary annuity and an annuity due is just this 1 plus r factor. Okay, so you're just finding the future value of the ordinary annuity to get the annuity due. So here's our question. Suppose you save $10,000 per year for 40 years, uh, the 40 years you're working, how much will you have in your account in year 40 if the interest rate is 8%? Again, we can use the formula for an ordinary annuity, and if we plug into this, we get $2,590,565.18. If we want to find the, the annuity due future value, 
we just take this ordinary annuity value and multiply it by 1.08. And again, this formula is a little bit tedious, and my experience is, is that students don't oftentimes put the formula incorrectly into their calculator, so they get the wrong answer. If you do something, if you don't do them in the right mathematical sequence, you'll get an answer that's not correct. So let's use the financial calculator again. Again, here we have these time value of money function keys. We did this before with the present value. The only thing we're going to do is compute future value. Again, you've got to make sure that you clear the workspace. Let me see if I compute present value. There's still a number in there. If I hit this, you know, clear down here, I hit compute PV, it's still there. The way you clear it is second clear TVM. And then now if I hit compute PV, you see it gives me zero because there are no, no values in there. All right, let's put the values in. Number of periods is 40. The interest rate is 8. Again, you put it in as a whole number. The PMT, the annuity, is 10,000. That's the amount per year that you're going to save. And we're going to compute the future value. And that's what we got before. And we could multiply this by 1.08 to get the value we had before. Or we could, again, adjust the calculator so it'll do the annuity due for us, which is second set here. Again, all the values are in there, so let's just compute the future value. And again, we get the same answer. So much easier to use the financial calculator. I encourage you to learn to use it. Um, if you're taking the CFA exam, you're allowed to use a financial calculator. This is one of the ones that is approved. So this is um, well worth learning to do.